Hi, this is Marina from Frogs and Frolics, and I'm going to show you how to make my Dakota winter or autumn coat. It is actually from age 2 to 12, so you can make it teeny appropriate or really cute for your little one. For the lining, I've used a beautiful quilted fabric and that will keep her nice and warm. The upper material is merino and cashmere mix, so very light and it's going to be keeping her very warm. Or oh, it did actually, she wore it all last winter. The hood, usually I would make in the upper material, but um, I ran out of fabric and the same on the sleeves. So I just made the sleeve shorter and the lining longer instead of the other way around. This is how it would normally be, of course. And um, actually, to be honest, I think this is really nice. So that's absolutely an option if you wanted to look a little bit different, you could do that. I'm also going to show you how to do this little corner. I think that's interesting for most of you. It's not attached to lining, so it hangs loose. And then we're going to do these super cute side pockets. Also very easy. You can, of course, put on proper welt pockets if you like. I'm going to put a positioning mark onto the pattern if you choose to do that. So I've cut it all out and I am ready to go. The pockets, I would just cut out of a funky rest, you've got to be fair. I wouldn't um, include that in my fabric allowance. The hood needs to be cut out twice, as we saw, the upper material and the lining. And I use jersey for lining. The sleeve needs to be cut twice in the upper material and the lining. And then it's just folded up in my case, but normally you wouldn't see it. The sleeve can be made with a cuff or without the cuff, but if you have a directional fabric like I did, make sure that actually it goes in the same direction and that it's smooth when you run your hand over it. So the front lining comes twice and then the back lining once on the fold. We've also got interlining for the facing and let's start by putting the pockets on. Pockets have to be uh, pinned on with a one centimeter seam allowance, like everything else on my pants. <laughs> and the front also has got uh, the facing included. So you just roll it over like this and then the lining and is attached on that. And I put little snips in here so you've got marks where they go together so it's easier to put them together. Now we're going to put our violin onto the wrong side of the fabric and there's my little pocket so let's hook over to the iron you need to make sure that it's not on hot because it will melt but once it's reduced in heat you leave the iron on and count to eight you go one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand etc until it's stuck on um, lots of people are frightened of this don't be frightened the violin still needs to be on if it doesn't then you need to just go again. Now we're going to work the sleeve cuff. Sew it together, one centimeter seam allowance. We have pinned it already, right sides facing. And then you can, if you want, iron the seam apart or you do what I do, just work it apart with your fingers and then just sew once round. When you're sewing round, you want to choose a rather large stitch length, not too small. And now we are going to do the pockets. So sew those in again, same seam allowance. And then you just simply roll the fabric over and top stitch it all the way down. That should look like this. So you do that on all the sides, of course. And now let's quickly make our hood. So you get your hood, which would be in the upper material, and this would be in your lining or contrast. And we're pinning it on, and then we're simply tucking in the edges. And the eyelets are gonna go through that stuff. So make sure that when you pin it in, that both sides are exactly the same. 
In my case, that was a little bit more difficult because I'd run out totally out of fabric. I literally had like a few centimeters left here and there, little snips. <laughs> so now we're going to top stitch this as well. Again, don't go too close to the edge and also use a large stitch length. Next, we're going to put the hood together right sides facing all the way around. Make sure that the edges are on top of each other and line up. Of course, instead of the hood, you can do the um, collar. The collar also is quite easy to do. There's nothing hard about it. Now we're going to work the eyelets. You want to mark where the eyelets go and then make sure that you turn over one centimeter here. That's real important because there is a seam allowance and you want the eyelet to be in the center. In fact, you can go two millimeters closer to the inside edge um, and then it'll be absolutely perfect. That's because we're going to do understitching. Take your tool and Put it underneath it to cut out the hole you can do other tools as well but this was the one that usually comes in the shops i'm not a great fan of this but in this case i didn't have anything else ready so there you go and then i'm going to put the upper part of my eyelet on and then i put the ring on over that and put my tool back over and hammer it down. I don't really like those too much because they're always, always flatten out. They're never really that pristine um, as they are with other tools. So, but still, if that's what you got, then it's a cheap way to do it. Next, we're going to also close the jersey and you can also top stitch that just to one side if you wanted to. I didn't do that, I just gave it a press. And then right sides facing, you put the lining onto the upper fabric and sew it together. And now you can see why the eyelet needed to be like that little centimeter further over because of that seam allowance. Fabric will always push when you're working with two different types. So use a pin to help you out. Don't let it push down and say, oh, my mine is too long. I'm just going to cut it off at the end because that is not going to work. It's going to distort the whole shape. And then we're doing the understitching. That means the uh, seam allowance is now facing into the lining and we're going to top stitch over the top of that. Turn it over. No need to iron this at all, but you could do if you like, and then you top stitch it not too close to the edge. And because we've understitched, we now move over a little bit more, and that means that the eyelet is uh, no longer quite central, which is why I said maybe you want to go over one more centimeter to the other side. all the way to the end and you get a beautiful finish and you can see the eyelet is not quite there you could of course put the eyelet in at this stage if you like that would work still um, if you can get in that high up and then I also top stitch down um, the same distance as I took from the outside the edge there uh, on this side as well so the same fixed point on the presser foot so that the jersey is attached to you might want to put a few pins on the inside just to make sure your jersey does not move. If you have never done this before, then give it a good press. You can see the eyelet is slightly uh, over in mine because I didn't think about the understitching. So now we're going to have to do a whole lot of overlocking and look at Magdalena's little face. She goes, hmm. Yes, this is how I feel when I have to do lots of overlocking. You do all the sides and when you come around the pocket, you need to make sure that you turn off your knife so that you don't cut into your fabric. And then you come around and you can actually go right in there. If you don't disable your knife, you're going to cut into your fabric. Go all the way down. 
and see how beautiful that is. And you do that on all the sides, regardless of whether you have lining or you have your upper fabric or the sides. You can also do, of course, the shoulders. And the one thing that um, is a good thing to do is come up one side, do your shoulders and straight away, don't even cut it off, save your thread and go down the other side. That's just a habit I would get into. Now we're going to work our little sleeves. We're just closing them with the right sides, facing each other, making sure that the cuffs line up. And go all the way up. Oh, they're so nice. Do the same on the lining, of course. Right sides facing, try to do it without pinning it because really it doesn't need it. Iron it apart and because you're working with polyester, if you're doing this like me, um, you could use an ironing cloth so that you can really steam it and you can really go over there with a lot of heat. So that's a good tip. Have one of those ironing cloths, mine is a silk organza cloth, hold down the seam so it will not come back out. Next we're going to attach the linings together. So back and front lining, side seam on top of each other. One centimeter seam allowance. Again, try not to pin all of this but just hold the end together so it can't move. And I've got one pin in the end there and then place the fabric edge to edge on top of each other and just go to the end. Now we want to iron this apart and the same thing applies again. Use your ironing cloth so that nothing melts and you can go on maximum heat on your iron and you don't need to reduce the heat and you've got a really crisp seam. Overlock the lower edge and then turn it up two and a half centimeters. Measure it and go round all the way. And then we're going to stitch it down from the wrong side. Find a fixed point on your presser foot uh, or your needle plate as well, obviously, to line it up and then go all the way. Now we're going to interface on the side seam. Now really you should be doing this um, before you start and in my written instructions it will say that if you have got fabric like mine here which is well really soft then this is quite important so that nothing rips out and it sits pristine that pocket because it is going to get a lot of use isn't it so there is a pattern piece for this of course by now in the pattern um, but here I didn't have one, it's kind of an afterthought and then I'm ironing this on. It doesn't look very nice if it's not caught in your overlocking, but there you go. If you use denim, you might not have to do it. Now we're going to put the front lining onto the front facing. So you line up your snips all the way to the top and right sides facing and sew it together. And you can see how much shorter the lining is now. Line up the front, top, and just work your way down. It's always easier to actually start on the hem to sew up, but of course one of them you couldn't. And that's how it's going to be folded up. So all pinned in, I'm just checking, all looks good, right? So let's sew this together. I'm coming up here on myself, snip on snip. And I'm always using my left hand to hold the fabric in place. When I take the pin out, you can see I'm really holding it down. There's a lot of muscle strength <laughs> involved in those little hands. And move it so you get that centimeter seam allowance. 
Now we're going to overlock these together so they're nice and neat. You could top stitch this edge as well. Um, I would almost recommend that, especially if you're working with thicker fabrics because it holds it down a bit. And now we're going to close the shoulder seams and we are effectively now joining up everything. So you're ending up with a big circle of coat, basically. There is no beginning and there is no end. So shoulders go together, right sides facing. Here I'm doing the lining, don't get confused. It's the facing from the front against the lining of the back. I move the other side over and do the same. Can really go wrong. It looks more complicated than it is. And now I'm also going to put in the back. So the back again, you do the same. Right sides facing, pinning it, and then we're going to sew them together. Of course, you've got to press them apart really neatly as well once they're sewn. Now we're going to close the side seams. We are actually going all the way around the pocket. So the point at which you're going to do this needs good marking. So right sides on top of each other. Pin it. And now I'm marking with my pins, or you could use a pencil if you like, where you're going to come up to, and then you're going to go into the pocket. It's really hard to tell when you are, have it on the sewing machine, I find. So um, you could mark it with a pencil, you turn, and you go all the way around. If you're working with a very lightweight fabric, you could have overlocked this all in one go at this stage, but I don't like that very much. If it's a wool fabric, it's too thick. I prefer to do it like this. So there's my mark. And I'm putting my needle down, press a foot up, flip it round, and then go down the other end, making sure that that tip is actually sewn in, yeah? Next, I'm going to snip so I can literally, um, you know, have those ironed apart. Also, what some people really like to do is to top stitch this from the outside. And again, you could do that, but because this is like a cashmere coat, I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to look like this with not too much top stitching. Uh, you could also put a little triangle there. And then I'm going to overlock it all the way around the lower part. Next we're going to put the hood inside the coat. So we're lining up the front of the hood with the facing and the side seams um, with the notches that you've cut into the back of the hood. So you find the center back of the hood, you find the front and you put that right in where the facing is and you pin it from one side to the other. So it's pinned basically to the upper part of the coat, yeah? So not to the lining, the upper part. And I would also suggest you put lots and lots of pins vertical to the seam here because it tends to fall over. So you wanna make sure that that doesn't happen and you just keep pinning it and you can leave those pins in and you can also put a few in so that your seams don't roll over while you're sewing. And then you take the lining and you put that over the same way and now it's sandwiched in between and I'm moving my pins out and I'm just putting them back in. You could of course stitch that in first but I just like to do it like this. It's fine, you only need one stitching line. There we go, it's all beautiful and sandwiched in. All I have to do is sew it together. One centimeter seam allowance, make sure none of your um, seam allowances on the shoulders fold over. And look at my little mod model here, rocking her cool stuff. <laughs> 
and you cut back so that it's a little bit flatter so seam allowances a little bit from the front there make sure that they're all nicely snipped back and then you snip it in the curves as well and now we can work that corner at the lower part at the hem of the coat so you've got your coat right sides together fold it over and then you also fold over where the seam allowance would be so it's all and then you mark four centimeters one and a half inches i think that is and you pin that in and we're going to sew it in and we're sewing exactly on that chalk line we've got and also at this point you can still kind of shimmy it around a bit so put the fronts on top of each other and check that they're the same length so if one is a little bit longer or a little bit shorter you can change that line obviously a bit shorter or longer to make it fit what you've got just in case you made a little mistake with the hood and then you can turn it so we've got the right side to the outside, work out the corner and turn up the rest of the hem, pin it all the way around in. Of course that's four centimeters as well. Just want to point out that the pocket here is caught in the coat and in your pattern it will not do that. This was my first sample that I've made and I thought oh, I might as well film it now. And um, so uh, I didn't realize that the pocket was actually that low. So yours is not being caught in it. So then we want to use a slip stitch to put it all in. And you're gonna grab a wee little bit from the upper coat fabric and a little bit more from the hem. And make very sure that it's not tight because then you will see the stitching on the outside. There will be like a little pull. So make sure that it's nice and loose like that. And then you also turn that seam allowance in and make sure that that is sewn down because that will impact also how the front will fall. If you don't do that, it won't hang as nicely. So we're just going to slip stitch that one in. Now we're going to do the sleeves and you've cut them so you've got the mirror image and when they're put together, which we already done, they should look like this. You have two snips which face the front and then I would suggest you put a basting thread or gather thread all the way around the sleeve head and then you pull it and you steam it in to get rid of the excess so that it's easier to be put in. A lot of people have trouble putting a sleeve in. They always say, oh, the sleeve's too big, the sleeve's not too big. If anything, the sleeve's too small, but um, I wanted to keep it easy so it just about fits in. Um, you need to find the snip that faces the front, like that, and then you put it on your arm, that's how I do it anyway, because I know this is now the front I go through and then I place my seams on top of each other. Okay, so right side on right side, the underarm seam on the sleeve seam, and I pin it all the way around. First you put a pin on the seam, and then you put a pin at the very top, and then you hold in the fabric here around the sleeve head area only that's about four centimeters to the front or five and five to the back and that is when you sew it in totally easy if you've steamed it in there's not a problem if you do it like I do then um, it will give you a few problems unless you've been doing it like lots of times like I have then it's okay and look how cute my little model Tina is there. Isn't she fabulous? Anyway, um, I check my sleeve and it falls nicely towards the front. If your sleeve hangs towards the back, then you're putting the wrong sleeve in. You do the same on the lining. So make sure though that you put the right sleeve in there because um, it's of course going to be exactly the opposite to the upper sleeve on that side, okay? So make sure that again, the snip in the front faces the front. 
and then you pin it in same way this is not going to be so easy on the lining I would definitely have a basting thread in there and then we're sewing them together on both of them now make sure that you don't let the sleeve fabric slide over the edge because it will want to do that um, so that it's easier to put it in and then snip it back at the top because you will ruin your sleeve you have to get it in and if that means you have to steam it a little bit more then so be it you can see i'm holding back the fabric making sure that it goes in you need some fabric to roll over that shoulder the shoulder isn't flat it's a 3d thing so that's why you have that excess and you need it um, you can see here it's a tiny bit of a struggle not too much but if i do it again i'd steam it in myself as well i just i think i was very tired uh, it was very hot in my room i was making a winter coat and i really wanted it done so that's why i missed out that step so use a pin help yourself out holding the fabric in place work your way all the way around so that all the excess is still in there And then it looks kind of like this. On the left hand side, this is what I did on Magdalena. And on the right hand side, this is what it would look like normally. Of course, you'd also have a cuff line there, stitching line, if that's what you did. So let's just finish off the cuff now. We need them to go together with the right sides facing. So you can turn it inside out completely and do it. Now you want to grab the seam allowance of that outer fabric and you just turn it in and pin it to the lining so now you know where it needs to go then you can turn the whole thing inside out and you can just sew them together now let's have a look at what that looks like in the fabric i take my sleeve so it's um how i want it i know which bits go together and then i just fold them in on each other so that we've got the seams on top of each other and the um, right sides facing and then I'm gonna go and pull this through to the inside so now I know these have to go together and I'm absolutely certain that I have no twist in it because I did it from the outside then you really tuck in the lining and you stitch it you can take that pin that marked it for you back out and Pin it so I think sometimes the theory of how you could do it and how you then actually do it is slightly different so um, whichever way you prefer I've pinned it all the way around you can see it's like a big circle that's how it needs to look and tuck in the lining so that you can get it under the sewing machine and now we're going to go all the way around keep holding it in tucking it in and sewing around and I have to say Anna has got her modeling groove on here look at that she's showing us that beautiful lining I think it's so nice when you use a fabulous contrast on a coat like that you won't get that in a shop will you so <laughs> put it back out and in my case the lining sticks out underneath it but that's only because I didn't have enough fabric now we're also going to attach the lining to the side seam just so it doesn't rise up and that's all we do now we're going to do everyone's favorite the button holes i've got my lovely ladybird buttons and there's little magdalena smiling again because what a lovely day she had and what a lovely coat and we're going 1.5 centimeters from the edge and then I mark where my button needs to go I'm also attaching something to my cord which goes through the eyelet I just want to tell you that it, this is not advisable if your child is under the age of three or even four if this gets caught anywhere that you can have a horrible accident you can do a fake one put some elastic through and then just fake it on the end and then you put your button into the end of your presser foot and because mine is a wonky shape I'm using another button which is about the same size and I push that shut so now I can put the button hauler back in 
pull down the sensor, which um, will sense when it needs to uh, stop making the buttonhole. One thing these sensors do though, if you touch them like I just did now, um, and I hadn't noticed, and in all fairness, my buttonhole stopped um, halfway through. So um, the best thing to do is to turn off your machine and then turn it back on and reset it because if you touch that sensor by chance the buttonhole will stop halfway through and it's really annoying to undo it. Also pull your fabric a little bit with your fingers simply because no matter how good your machine is if you have very thick fabric it's not an industrial buttonhole maker so it will need a little bit of support um, you are pulling it or just helping it along basically. On my puff machine it works quite well. I have to say this is really good. I prefer the mechanical puff machine for the buttonholes because you don't have that silly sensor. Now I'm going to open up my buttonhole with a quick unpick and then I get in with my scissors and I cut to both ends right into the end and then I can button them up see where my buttons need to go and I just sew them on. I hope you enjoyed watching making the Dakota coat and you can do it yourself you can make it with a collar or you can make it with a hood and there are numerous videos for that so just click on the playlist under the info button and it will take you to the playlist where you find also the video which introduces you to the pattern and all the options you've got with it. So thank you for watching again and I'll see you next time. Bye!